which means that the people that are even supposedly on our side in the monetary sphere do not understand this either that higher rates means higher inflation at this point in the monetary cycle higher interest rates though painful will not lead to controlled price inflation join rafi farber as he tackles a contentious economic topic despite the prevailing belief that raising interest rates combats inflation Recent events challenge this notion. Farber examines the turmoil in the yen, attributed to the Bank of Japan's reluctance to hike rates, which contradicts conventional wisdom. In fact, evidence suggests that raising rates may worsen the yen's decline, a trend since 2015. Farber will explore how higher rates now fuel inflation, leaving the Keynesian establishment with few options. Tune in as he unravels the fallacy and potentially reveals the true value of precious metals in today's economic landscape. If there's one thing that's the most exciting to me personally, it's that I'm starting to see that the monetary sphere is turning the corner to realizing that higher rates mean higher inflation, by which I mean the Keynesian definition of inflation, which is rising consumer prices. They're not quite there yet, but they're about to get there. And the biggest piece of the puzzle that I see to recognizing that higher rates means higher prices is the Japanese yen, because it keeps falling faster and faster and faster. I woke up this morning and it's now at 156. And we'll see what happens when the Bank of Japan makes an emergency rate hike and the yen falls even faster, that is going to freak a lot of Keynesian monetary theorists out. And everyone in the mainstream financial media, to a man, is a Keynesian monetary theorist. But just like in the late 1970s, when rates went up and up and up along with consumer prices, we've already entered this era. All we need now is for the talking heads to realize this and admit it, and then, in my opinion, we'll be on a beeline to the end game. And as I've said before, the logical reason why in this environment higher rates mean higher prices is that currencies are backed almost entirely by debt, and hiking rates means the value of debt falls. If the value of debt falls, and currencies are backed by mostly like mid 90% debt, then cut the value of that debt and you cut the value of the currency. The Keynesians don't understand this yet, but they're a so on the one hand, they're not hedged against silver, which is what I prefer. On the other hand, there is a natural hedge against volatile silver prices and the fact that they now are producing a lot more gold out of West Africa. And with that, let's go to the slides. I wanted to start with the yen because that's where the action is. And if you've been following the silver report for the last few months or even the last few years, you know that I look at the yen very carefully because the yen is basically the poster child for Keynesian gobbledygook magic, proving, quote unquote, that it works, except it's going to collapse spectacularly because it's such a spectacular Frankenstein Keynesian money printing experiment that it is going to crash and burn. I don't know for sure if that crash and burn is happening already, but it looks like it might be. So we have here the final support for the yen at 158.9, I think that is over here. Let's just say 160 in 1990. This is back when the Japanese stock market was at all time highs. Uh, even in gold terms, it was at all time highs. And though nominally the Japanese stock market has broken those all time highs, it is nowhere near the all time highs in gold prices in terms of gold. So in terms of real money, the Japanese stock, bar stock market is way down and this is all an inflationary illusion. It doesn't exist. So we have here the two lines from uh, the stock charts chart over here. We have Japanese rates and the yen, and I've shown this before, I just want to show you in different time periods here. It's been, it's pretty much been this way since uh, just after 
uh, Abenomics began when he started expanding the balance sheet in an insane way. And the crazy Keynesian experiment became a super insane, crazy Keynesian experiment. And since then, we've had higher rates equals lower yen, lower rates equals higher yen. You'll see on the next slide here that the mainstream unit still doesn't understand this, even though this correlation has been in place since about 2015. So we go to the next chart here, and this is from Trading Economics. If you look up the yen, uh, we're now, this is old already. It says 154.75. We're already past 156 now. So uh, we're very, very close to that final support of about 158 to 160. And uh, the, it, it, we could be there, you know, in the next two or three days, judging by how fast the yen is collapsing right now. So the point is, if you read this paragraph over here, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just the first sentence is enough to show you uh, what I mean here. The Japanese yen, it says, weakened to around 156 per dollar, hitting that level for the first time since May 1990, as the Bank of Japan held interest rates steady, despite pressure from a sharply falling currency as widely expected. That sentence is implying that had the Bank of Japan raised rates, that the yen would be doing better. But we see from the previous chart here that that is not true, and it won't be true going forward either. When will they let go of this fantasy that higher rates means a stronger currency? Because in this environment, when currencies are almost entirely backed by debt, that is not true. So I believe that once the Bank of Japan panics and raises rates in an effort to save their currency and the yen gets even worse, that is when they'll start to have to admit that this is not working anymore and there's nothing that they can do. <clears throat> Going back to this chart, uh, I titled it Yen Carry Trade Forces Yield Japanese Yen Correlation. If you imagine what the yen carry trade is, it takes advantage of the difference in interest rates between the yen, yen debt, and dollar debt, meaning yen, uh, Japanese government bonds, and treasuries. Uh, the yield on Japanese government bonds is basically zero at three months, and the yield on dollars is like, what, close to 5% now, something like that. So you sell yen to buy dollars to earn the difference, and the lower the yen goes, you can take those dollars and buy back even more yen. So the more the yen falls, the more that encourages the carry trade. And that piles more people into the carry trade to sell yen to make it even weaker so that they can get even more yen back when they close the trade. And this creates a snowball effect, which is what is happening. So the weaker the yen goes, the more people are encouraged to participate in the carry trade and make the yen even weaker. And I don't know if it can stop itself. This article from Ahead of the Herd, which usually has pretty good pieces, but this one by Richard Mills is pretty rambling and I'm not a big fan of it. And I wanted to explain briefly why. He says here is a Volcker-like series of rate hikes in the cards by Richard Mills. And he gives this whole rambling historical lesson about uh, G Miller, is that his name? The Fed chair before Volcker. Um, and uh, versus Volcker, who hiked rates, and Miller, who didn't. And he goes into the whole thing to show how much he knows about the history of different Fed chairs or Fed chairmen back then, because back then gender language wasn't illegal. Going through this entire article, and I didn't read the whole thing because I just, I couldn't. I just looked at the conclusion, and that is this. And it shows you the same lack of understanding that higher rates are going to lead to higher prices. He says here, our conclusion is that we are in uncharted territory. Everything, including gold, copper, the dollar, interest rates, and inflation is going up. It's a trend for which there appears to be no historical precedent, apart from the fact that the higher rates, higher interest rates, though painful, eventually lead to the desired result of bringing inflation back into line. That is 100% specifically wrong. There is historical precedent for what is happening now. It is the late 1970s. What this guy does not understand, much like the Keynesians do not understand, which means that the people that are even supposedly on our side in the monetary sphere do not understand this either, that higher rates means higher inflation, 
at this point in the monetary cycle. Higher interest rates, though painful, will not lead to controlled price inflation. It will lead to exacerbated price inflation. So then what will calm it down? The answer is absolutely nothing. What could theoretically calm it down? A massive increase in productivity that would shower us all with so much goods and services that the supply of goods and services would be so high that prices would have to come down. But that ain't happening. Today's exploration has shattered conventional wisdom, revealing the nuanced reality of economic theory. As we conclude, remember that in a world of complexities, understanding is our greatest asset. Keep the conversation alive by subscribing and joining us for future deep dives into the heart of economic discourse. Until next time, dare to challenge the status quo, embrace curiosity, and let's continue unraveling the mysteries of our financial world together. Thanks again.